Hello and welcome to this next topic of OCI A Level Chemistry. This is topic 36, which is organic synthesis the second time around. So we've done organic synthesis before and I'll link that in the description below. But this is organic synthesis 2 and there's slightly different things that we can talk about. Now a lot of it is still the same. You need to be able to divide a synthetic route to get to a certain chemical. And you also need to be aware of the fact that one chemical can have more than one functional group and that those functional groups just behave independently. So if you've got a carboxylic acid and then a couple of steps along you've got a ketone, then treat the carboxylic acid like a carboxylic acid, treat the ketone like a ketone, and everything will be fine. But I've gone through that before. What I'm going to talk about mainly today is the two ways of making organic products. And it depends on whether the organic product you're making is a liquid or a solid. And you need to know the basics of organic synthetic techniques to make either an organic liquid or an organic solid. So I'm just going to go through the steps for each of those. So when you're producing an organic liquid, a lot of the time you end up with a layer which is aqueous, so it dissolves in water, and the layer which is it's called organic, it's the layer which doesn't dissolve in water. So the first step is always to separate the aqueous layer from the organic layer. So the organic layer almost always is where you find the product of the reaction. And to do that, all you do is put them in a separating funnel, which is just literally a funnel with a tap at the bottom, allow them to separate out, and then pour off the lower layer. Now it depends upon the density of the organic liquid as to which one is on top and which one's on the bottom, but you can test that by just adding a little drop of water, and the drop of water will go to whichever the aqueous layer is. So if you add a bit in and the bottom layer gets bigger, then that means that the bottom layer is the aqueous layer. Once you've separated them, you need to make sure that there's no water left in your organic layer. And to do that, what you do is you add an anhydrous salt. And anhydrous salts will absorb the water from the organic layer. Now the classic ones are magnesium sulfate and calcium chloride. And then your final step, once you've got a dry sample of your organic liquid, is to purify it by what's called redistillation. So that's just distillation, really. You purify it by distilling off the product. Anything which is not your organic product that uh, gets left behind, thus purifying it. So these are the steps for synthesis of an organic liquid. It doesn't tell you how to make the liquid. And so these are the steps really for purifying an organic liquid. A lot of the time you end up with organic layer and aqueous layer, so you separate them, dry the organic layer, and then redistill to make a pure product. We also need to be able to do organic solid synthesis. And when you do organic solid synthesis, what you normally end up with is a solid precipitate in some kind of liquid. So the first thing you need to do is filter it. Now, normal filtration, we don't do that because it's too slow. You use reduced pressure filtration, which you should have done in experiments. So all you do is put it in a Buckner funnel and then create a vacuum in the flask below, pulling through the liquid and leaving your product as the solid on the filter paper. And then after you've separated the solid from the liquid, so you've got your solid residue, that solid residue you then have to recrystallize, so you dissolve it in the minimum amount of a hot solvent and then allow it to cool down and the solid will precipitate out as pure crystals. Now this step is actually quite difficult. You'll always be told what the solvent is, but trying to find a solvent where it's very soluble when it's hot, but not at all soluble when it's cold, it's quite difficult. But as I say, you should be given the solvent to use, otherwise just say hot solvent. So you add hot solvent until it dissolves and then when you cool it down, it becomes much less soluble, and so crystallizes it out, leaving any impurities dissolved in the solvent. And the last thing it says in the specification is that you should then be able to calculate a melting point from that. So melting points should have a small range, so that they melt very quickly once you get to their melting point. The more pure it is, the smaller the range is, and the more impure it is, the bigger the range and the lower the melting point will be. Now I don't think that technically fits into the purification of organic solids, or even the separation of organic solids from the reaction mixture. But it's in the specification, so make sure you know a little bit about melting points and how they change depending on how pure the sample is. I'll say again that impure samples have a larger range than pure samples, and the melting point is almost invariably lower than the pure melting point. The reason is because the impurities break up the structure of the pure crystals, making the bonds between them weaker, and so they have a melting point which is lower. Also, the impurities are irregularly spaced, and so you get some parts of the crystal melting at low temperatures, and then some at high temperatures. That's why it gives a bigger range in the melting point. So for this topic, really what you need to know are the stages of organic liquid synthesis. 
So that it's separation using a separating funnel, drying with an anhydrous salt like magnesium sulfate, and then purification by redistillation. And then same again, but for organic solid synthesis. So this time the separation is done by reduced pressure filtration using a Buckner funnel and a Buckner flask. You need to recrystallize then to purify from a minimum amount of hot solvent and then allow it to cool to get your crystals. And that is it for this topic on organic synthesis, the second one. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you can join me for the next one. Goodbye.